Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? Be ever impressive. But never duplicate. 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 Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C. here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. So I'm back again working on the Epiphone Les Paul Special 2 Custom. And a couple of things that I wanted to get back into track as far as this neck goes. Uh, the neck is pretty much almost complete. I want to do a fret polishing on this thing after I get done doing the other polishing that I need to do. Uh, that I'm going to show you guys next. Headstock is basically done. I don't really have to do anything with that. Now the one thing that I noticed with the Spray Max Matte Finish Clear, uh, it's not, it doesn't spray out pretty smooth the way you think it would spray out really smooth. It's got a little bit of a texture to it. So what I ended up doing is I ended up giving the neck a little bit of a sanding on there with some 1500 grit sandpaper to kind of dull it down get rid of that texture and make it more uh, feel like silk basically really nice and soft Your hands shouldn't stick to it when you're playing it um, eventually after playing the guitar for a good amount of time this might end up polishing itself back out again just by you know working it with your hand now the one thing that this thing had that I want to put back in the neck is the binding that is going across the fretboard over here was had a gloss finish to it. Now what I had to do is I had to sand down the neck after removing the tape there was a tape line so I had to get rid of that tape line as well and doing so it kind of faded out the gloss that was on the binding over here so I need to put that back. So one of the things that I'm going to end up doing is masking off the body of the neck only exposing the binding on the edge of the fretboard. And this could be done with just basic masking tape. So I'm going to go ahead and slide out a piece of masking tape over here. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and just put an edge between the fretboard and the neck over here. So what I'm going to do is try to follow where the neck the fretboard is mounted to the neck and get a nice straight line. So I got the edge of the tape put down. I want to stretch this and kind of line myself up evenly with the differences between the fretboard and the neck itself. Now masking tape will stretch up to a point. You can also think you're stretching it straight but yeah, it still has a little bit of a curve to it and it won't look right if you notice that it kind of has a bend in it or it does not even all the way across. It ain't going to look right when you do your finishing product. So this has already been sanded down with 1500 grit sandpaper. You can polish out 1500 grit sandpaper, but it's going to have a little bit of a hazy look to it. So what I've got going on over here is somewhere in here I have a piece of... 2500 grit sandpaper. Here it is. And I just want to do a little bit of a wet sanding only on the binding, trying not to get it on the fretboard itself uh, or sanding down the frets. And you'll notice too, if you, you're doing this and you have some sharp frets, you will notice that the uh, wet sandpaper will start to get chewed up by those sharp frets. Luckily this doesn't have that problem. These frets were pretty good on this guitar when I ended up getting it. Now I do have an unboxing to do, which is the next uh, project guitar that I picked up. Another Epiphone Les Paul. Um, I don't think this is not a special though. But it does have a screwed on neck, which will make it easier to put the body inside of the vacuum bag if I'm going to do a veneering on it. So I haven't decided exactly what I want to do with it. I did pick up some more veneer. I kind of have a little bit of a plan that may or may not work. So I have to test out my theory on how this is before I even try it. Now the tape is going to separate the 1500 grit and the 2500 grit sandpaper so it will look different after removing the tape 
if you do not polish this, you will notice a difference. There will be more of a, um, how do I explain it? The area that you're sanding with the 1500 grit sandpaper and the area that you did with the 2000 or, three, or 2500 grit sandpaper will have a little bit of a difference of how it looks. The 25 grit sandpaper, 25 grit, 2500 grit sandpaper, <coughs> excuse me, will have a little bit of a sheen to it to where it's not really uh, a gloss but it will look like it. Now you want to be careful when sanding over masking tape because you can lose your straight line and you are cutting the tape a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and call that good. Wipe off the water. I didn't get anything on the frets or fretboard or in between the frets water and wood don't really mix very well. I don't care what kind of wood it is. So I've got my buffer over here. No, not really a buffer, but it's just a drill. <coughs> Excuse me. And what I got going on over here is I got a kind of not a medium pad on here, but it's, it's a little bit of a uh, more dense foam pad. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of rubbing compound just on the edge edge of the pad if I can get the compound I've been using this so much that all of it sets to the bottom so I'm just gonna go around the edge with some dots just to get some on the pad itself and you're not hurting the pad doing this at all unless you have some really sharp frets and then in that case you'll be tearing this pad up like you wouldn't believe if you had sharp frets on your guitar only if you're doing something like this so what I'm going to do is basically you take the edge of the pad and go over the edge of the fretboard. So I'm going to kind of put some rubbing compound on this binding that's on the edge of this fretboard. And then go ahead and start to polish it out. This is more of a cosmetic thing than anything that would be really needed, but I kind of like the way it looks. Now, like I said, if these frets were really sharp on the edge of them, uh, this pad would be tearing to shreds, and you'd be seeing you'd be seeing that uh, pieces of the pad all over the place. I remind you that even though I'm doing the edge of the pad with the rubbing compound, it's still going to sling this stuff all over the place. So,
And this should give me a nice line of black gloss and faded on the neck. As you can see I have the gloss back only on the binding of the fretboard, not on the neck itself. Now I do the other side. All right, so we begin. There is a. This is the first time I've ever seen a sticker like this on a guitar. It says caution. Read this before opening, and it tells you. Uh, we realize that you really want to open this box and start playing your new instrument, but we. Uh, strongly recommend that you wait 24 hours before <laughs> it tells you everything what to do here. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. Looks like it's pretty well packed. Looks like it's pretty well packed. Looks like it's got the original box. Oh, isn't this cute? So it's an Epiphone Les Paul Power Players. Now, this guitar it's smaller than the standard Les Paul guitar. This is a. Uh, it's got 22 frets. This is a 2275 scale length, mahogany body, mahogany neck, taper D uh, neck profile on this thing. And uh, yeah, so let's open this thing up and see what it is. Well, obviously you can see on the box what it is, but let's get some tape over here. So this was bought used. It does come with a little bit of a some candy, box candy. So what we have here is a nice little Epiphone guitar. In pretty damn good shape. No neck cracking. Kind of cute, ain't it? A little less Paul, huh? Shit, the damn thing is used, but it looks like brand fucking new. It still has the plastic over the bo the covers. Didn't get all the plastic off over here. So we got tone, tone, or volume, volume, tone, tone. No tailpiece. Wrap around bridge. Action height's not too bad on this thing. Got the open book headstock on this. Oh, these are better than the box tuners that uh, came on the Epiphone Special, that's for sure. Yeah. Little tiny less Paul, huh? So I figured, you know what? Let's do something with this. It might have painted. Nope, this is actual binding. It's not painted on binding. That's kind of nice. So I figured that I'm going to customize this little cute guitar. How about that? Now I picked this thing up for a hundred bucks. Uh, this goes for like two seventy nine new through just variety of websites that you can buy one of these from. Uh, it is a shorter scale length. Uh, it's a kid's guitar. You know, it, it's something that you buy for, for your kid. But uh, don't get me wrong with this, okay? From what I've read about this thing, this makes a great travel guitar as well. It actually sounds damn good. Um, these pickups are actually pretty decent. What did it say the pickups were? Hold on. This is 650R and a 700T ceramic pickups. So I'll try to check them out to see what the impedance is on these things. And uh, yeah, it'd be kind of nice to find out what the output would be like this. 
bolt-on neck, made in China, of course. Has a serial number on it. Yeah, it's not in bad shape. I mean, it's got well, it's not even a scratch. There's a smudge. It's not all scratched up, not all chipped up. Still has a lot of the plastic still on this thing. That's why I picked it up, because it's actually a decent little guitar. Alright, so this will be the next project that I'll be working on, and I'll probably throw it back up on eBay as well. Oh, and let's not forget here that the this guitar comes with, in the bag over here, which I didn't even notice, got a strap. Actually, this cable here is a little bit heavier than the normal cable that it is. Oh, wow. Let's see here. So this is the cheap cable that you usually get with uh, a lot of guitars, okay? And this is the Epiphone. It actually comes with a decent cable for once. Wow. Alright, what else we got here? Looks like we got some stickers. Uh, let's see. There's an app to download for this. It looks like everything's here. So it comes with some candies as well in a bag. Like I said, this thing, it says used, but it's almost like brand new. Hmm, interesting. So after I get done with it, it'll come with the original box and everything that you see here when I go ahead and sell it. So right now it's sitting on the stand, and it'll be my next little project. And when I say little project, I mean it's a little project.